So uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm going to be talking, switching gears a little bit. In the last talk, we were uh, discussing hash function security in the sense of collision resistance. Uh, and now we're going to look at it in terms of a stronger uh, or at least different uh, security property, which is that of indifferentiability, which Evgeny nicely set up a segue for me. So we'll look at two functions, uh, h squared uh, and hmac. And I'll talk mostly about hmac, and we'll see how h squared comes up as a natural uh, 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 target of analysis uh, as we uh, look at HMAC. So HMAC was a, a hash function construction uh, introduced in 1996 that specifies how to use the black box a cryptographic hash function to build a keyed cryptographic hash function. And that means a uh, object that takes both a variable length key and a variable length message and maps it down to a n-bit digest. HMAC does this by deriving two subkeys, k in and k out, from uh, the key k, and then hashing uh, the message and the first uh, subkey, and then hashing the result of that prefixed with the second subkey, and then uh, the result is the HMAC of km. And we'll see some details about uh, the uh, way k and k out are derived, uh, which is very critical to our results in a few moments. So this was originally designed and uh, analyzed for the setting of message authentication with secret keys. But now HMAC is used in a wide variety of settings. So if you're already bored and uh, surfing the web right now, uh, you're using assuredly HMAC in a whole host of ways. Um, and unlike in the original uh, Envision usage where HMAC was uh, designed to use with uniform secret bit strings, uh, now many of these settings use HMAC with keys that are, for example, uh, Divi-Hellman group values or uh, passwords or even public values such as nonces that are sent uh, in the clear and may have, adversaries may have access to. So in terms of security for these uh, uh, applications of HMAC, well, when we have a, a key that is a secret uniform, uh, uh, a secret uniform bit string, then we can appeal to some of the uh, well-known results about HMAC being a good pseudorandom function. There's also some work showing that in some settings, if uh, you have a high entropy secret input, then HMAC is a good randomness extractor. But these standard model results don't uh, work for all of the uh, applications of HMAC. And in particular, we uh, see that in the literature and in implicitly in, in practice, HMAC is being assumed or modeled as uh, a keyed random oracle in the sense of Bellari Ragway uh, 1993. And what this means is that we really think of HMAC as being uh, as, as mapping each km pair to a random and uniformly chosen output. So I won't go into the details about uh, all the you know, results that use this uh, modeling of HMAC, but suffice it to say the standard model uh, techniques do not work, and in particular it's because the key input is being used for non um, in a non-standard way. And really, we have this expectation that this, this should be OK, right? That HMAC does really give us somewhat random behavior for any uh, KM input. So this brings us to our main you know, motivating question for this work, which is, does HMAC really live up to these uh, expectations of behaving like a random oracle? And we'd at least like to hope that this holds true in a setting where we generously assume that the underlying hash function, underlying hash function H, is itself perfectly secure, so mapping inputs to random looking outputs. So we can formalize this question uh, using the indifferentiability framework. I'll uh, give details in a second. Um, and uh, then we have, uh, and this gives us this, this question, is HMAC indifferentiable from a random oracle? Now, this surfaces a, 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 a slim, simpler and, and very elegant uh, question, in my opinion, which is uh, the indifferentiability of a related construction which is h squared, or the hash of hash construction. Now, this was actually suggested in a, a textbook, Practical Cryptography, by Ferguson Schneier uh, in 2003. And it's basically like HMAC without the keys. Just get rid of all the keys, and you have a, a hash function uh, applied twice to a message. And this was suggested particularly to avoid uh, extension attacks that, that plague some uh, prior hash function constructions. So these are our two questions. And we would certainly expect that the answers to these questions are yes, and in particular, we thought, setting out to do this work, that the answers would certainly be yes. 
Uh, first, there's very strong positive intuition that the answers are yes. Uh, these these uh, constructions were designed to prevent length extension attacks, and so uh, and length extension attacks are one of the ways and one of the main ways in which hash functions kind of fail to behave like a random oracle. It almost seems, particularly for the case of h squared, that what we're asking is almost tautological. That we're saying if you take a random oracle and compose it with itself, you get a, uh, a uh, something that behaves like a random oracle. So it seems like it should be true. And indeed, there's been some uh, tangential evidence in the literature suggesting that uh, it was the case. Uh, in uh, CD, uh, Crone et al. in 2005 proved a related construction, the h uh, squared of, of m but with some zeros prepended. It is indifferentiable from a random oracle. And they somewhat confusingly uh, called this the HMAC construction, but it's not really HMAC as uh, uh, we define it uh, in, in, in standards. And indeed, in crypto 2010, there was a suggestion that uh, this proof uh, should extend to the real HMAC and to uh, H squared. Certainly, we shared this intuition that uh, it should be a straightforward application of the techniques um, uh, to the, the, the actual functions. So uh, with all that uh, set up in mind, we actually find that the truth is quite a bit more complicated. Uh, and in fact, that the indifferentiability of, of HMAC and uh, H squared are, are surface some very interesting technical questions and challenges. The first thing we realize is that in these settings where HMAC is being used with not just fixed length uh, bit strings that are uniformly chosen in secret, but perhaps arbitrary variable length uh, uh, keys, there's actually weak uh, key pairs in the key space of HMAC that um, cause issues. The first type of weak key pair is a colliding key pair, and this obviates indifferentiability and may even have uh, issues elsewhere. Uh, the second is uh, ambiguous key pairs, which basically um, prevent uh, HMAC from having strict domain separation between the inner and outer application of the hash function. And the, the HMAC with ambiguous key pairs basically uh, ends up behaving much like H squared, which uh, by design has no domain separation between the inner and outer application. And what we find here is some very uh, interesting uh, technical uh, setting where the indifferentiability can be shown, but only with weak concrete security. And I'll explain more about that in a moment. And then finally, we end with a, a positive message that if you indeed avoid weak key pairs in HMAC, then everything seems to be OK, and we can prove strong uh, traditional indifferentiability uh, for the construction. So. Uh, to get towards these results, let me step back a bit and formalize uh, or give a bit more formal treatment of what we mean by indifferentiability. And so this is a framework that was introduced by Maurer, Renner, and Holstein in 2004, and then Crone et al. in 2005 popularized it for, uh, as a, a criteria for hash function design, that we should have hash functions that behave like random oracle or indifferentiable from random oracle. So briefly, uh, indifferentiably from random oracle asks that uh, no distinguisher should be able to tell which of two worlds he's interacting with. In the first world, he's given uh, a left oracle, which is the hash construction, and a right oracle, which is the underlying uh, ideal object. And in the ideal world, he's given access to instead uh, a random oracle and a simulator whose job it is to uh, use its oracle access to the random oracle to trick the distinguisher into thinking he's in the, in the uh, real world. And we have the usual type of uh, measurement or definition of security that if we can give a simulator that's efficient and uh, uh, succeeds at tricking uh, all efficient uh, distinguishers, then we call it indifferentiable uh, from a random oracle. For uh, HMAC, which has uh, keys and messages, uh, this is exactly the same definition, except that we allow additionally that the distinguisher, as well as the simulator, can uh, choose, uh, uh, queries the random oracle or HMAC on both keys and messages. So particularly this captures what we want, which is uh, keys that are of you know, arbitrary uh, choosing, which matches up with the applications. So the benefits of indifferentiability uh, really stem from a, a very nice composition theorem that was proven by Maurer, uh, Renner, and Holenstein, uh, which at a very high level says that if you, if you did have uh, in, a, indifferentiability of a construction like HMAC, and you had some applications where one's proven security of uh, protocols that 
uh, in a setting where you've modeled uh, HMAC as a random oracle, then the composition theorem implies that these applications are uh, actually su secure using HMAC as opposed to the random oracle. And what this gives us is um, a very nice guarantee that the structure of HMAC uh, or whatever hash function construction you're looking at uh, doesn't introduce weaknesses into your application. So there are some limitations to uh, indifferentiability. Uh, last year at Eurocrypt, we had a paper talking about how uh, only single stage games are um, uh, applicable. Uh, the composition theorem is only applicable to single stage games, but that's not uh, critical. We, the games we're looking at here, in fact, are uh, single stage. And uh, second, uh, concrete security here ends up being very important. So in particular, uh, what will be relevant in our setting is whether the how many queries the simulator must make in order to uh, trick the distinguisher. And normally we uh, look for indifferentiable guarantees where the simulator makes the same number of queries as it is queried, uh, but we'll call it weak indifferentiability if it uh, has to make many more queries. So uh, let's take a closer look at HMAC now to understand whether uh, we can prove uh, in general for arbitrary keys and messages that this uh, behaves like a random oracle. And uh, HMAC is uh, a bit more complicated than one usually thinks about it uh, if you look at like textbooks or the Wikipedia article, such as I was doing last night. And what it actually does is it takes uh, the input key and message, and it first checks to see if the key K is of length larger than a parameter uh, D, and this D is the block length of the underlying hash function H. If it is longer, then it first hashes the key down to drive a new key K prime. Otherwise, it just leaves K as it was. It then appends to uh, this value enough zeros to get a D-bit string, and then this D-bit string is uh, exclusive ord with uh, a constant string iPad that's also D-bits in length to get K in and as well as XORed with a constant string OPAD to get K out, and then we uh, hash as we saw before. So we see that um, when in the setting where you have variable length keys, in fact, HMAC doesn't provide an uh, unambiguous encoding of um, keys, uh, or in, in the key scheduling. So in particular, by appending out with just zeros, we get this phenomenon that you can have key pair, keys that collide with one another. And so, for example, uh, any uh, K1 and K2 that are not equal, but such that HMAC of K1 comma M is equal to HMAC of K2 comma M. And so a very simple example of this is just a, a key K1 and a key K2, which is equal to K1 concatenated zero. These are treated the same by HMAC. So this gives a trivial uh, indifferentiability distinguisher that just makes two queries to its uh, left oracle. And it may be an issue in uh, some uh, settings in practice where there's variable length keys being used, um, but we're not aware of any uh, places where vulnerabilities arise. I'll talk more about that in a moment. And, and perhaps the reason this has never really come up is that most applications do use uh, uh, keys of a fixed length, in which case, as long as H is collision resistant, this, uh, uh, this, these colliding key pairs do not arise. So the second type of... Uh, key pairs that are weak are called ambiguous key pairs, and these arise uh, in the way that domain separation is attempted to uh, be uh, uh, insured in HMAC. In particular, we can have keys K1 not equal to K2, such that after uh, processing K1 uh, sub in is equal to K2 sub out and vice versa. And so, for example, K2 equal to K1 x or iPad x or OPAD uh, is uh, such a pair. And this really means that we get no inner outer uh, domain separation uh, in applications of, of H. So before I get into more talking about how ambiguous key pairs arise in differentiability, let me just summarize what we know about HMAX and differentiability. If we allow variable length keys, uh, and in particular colliding key pairs, then you get that it's non differentiable at all. Uh, ambiguous key pairs will give us that it is at most weakly uh, indifferentiable uh, from a random oracle. Uh, finally, if we avoid uh, uh, such weak key pairs, then we do get nice guarantees. And in the uh, paper, we uh, prove using techniques very much like those in the CDMP05 result to show that, in fact, uh, you get a nice, strong, traditional guarantee of, of indifferentiability. 
So the most technically interesting um, uh, point in this table is, is in this middle ground between having no uh, security uh, and having uh, complete security. And this is due to ambiguous uh, key pairs. So as I mentioned, this has to do with the uh, lack of domain separation between the inner and outer applications of the hash function. Uh, and it's actually easier to look at this in the context of H squared, which, as I mentioned before, by design has no uh, domain separation between the inner and outer application. And what we see is that uh, this construction has uh, the property that any output uh, of the construction, in fact, is an intermediate uh, value used in the computation of another message in the domain. So in particular, if we let m prime equal to h of m, then we note that h squared of m is, in fact, the intermediate value used to compute h squared of m prime. Okay, this sounds uh, like a, just a very, this is a very basic observation, but it's uh, disconcerting to someone who's done a lot of work on indifferentiability. Um, prior constructions particularly seek to avoid such uh, phenomenon, and uh, in particular because similar, not exactly this, but similar types of uh, intermediate value leakage have uh, resulted in extension attacks, which are, in fact, exactly what these types of constructions were trying to, to prevent. So it's not clear exactly what uh, one, an attacker can do with this property of the hash construction. Uh, so we did quite a bit of work to uh, uh, figure that out. And in particular, um, we're able to give a, a distinguisher D that uh, can force the simulator to make a large number of queries. So in particular, this distinguisher D is going to make Q sub L queries to its left oracle, Q sub R queries to its right oracle, and it's going to be guaranteed to get an advantage of uh, one minus the number of queries the simulator makes over QL times QR. And so what this does is it means that the only way the simulator can be uh, effective is to make a large number of queries, and, um, uh, and so we get this sense that it can only be weakly indifferentiable. Now in the paper, we show a matching upper bound for H squared that if you give the simulator Q order Q squared queries, you can uh, prove indifferentiability. Uh, this is a very technical result, and you know, I, I warn you before you print out the paper, it's like 60 pages of, of, of games, um, so I won't talk about it here more. So HMAC, we have a similar phenomenon, uh, basically the same type of approach. If you have ambiguous key pairs and you can use them, then you can uh, inflate the number of queries the simulator must make. We note that uh, right now we don't have an upper bound that is analogous to the H squared upper bound for, for HMAC, but we suspect that it is uh, possible to prove. It's just gonna be very messy. So you might ask why it doesn't really seem like it should matter much whether Q squared uh, or Q. Uh, I mean, it's just, you know, it's all polynomials or whatever. But in fact, in, in many settings, the, this gap uh, can be quite critical. In the paper, we give uh, an example of a setting in which this uh, threshold is sharp. So uh, it's vulnerable using uh, H squared or HMAC, even with the underlying component totally uh, secure, um, but secure instead if you had just used a, a random oracle by itself. And so this shows a, a sharp gap between the security of using these constructions uh, and a random oracle. So um, we uh, were concerned, of course, that there was vulnerabilities in practice about, uh, uh, particularly with HMAC, um, but it seems fortuitously that most applications avoid uh, weak key pairs naturally. So uh, from my kind of informal analysis of, of many of these applications, these all seem fine. Uh, with settings where you're using variable length keys, colliding key pairs might be an issue, but as far as we're aware, nothing, no actual uh, tools are, are, are uh, in danger. But certainly HMAC is used all over the place and it would be good to be aware of, of uh, weak key pairs moving forward. So just uh, very briefly, we can uh, extend, uh, uh, all these results extend in the paper to when H is not a random oracle, but an iterative hash function. And of course, we know how to fix uh, these two constructions uh, from the point of view of indifferentiability, but of course, that would uh, have a, another host of issues. So I think I'm out of time, um, uh, so I'll just leave the summary slide up here and be happy to take any uh, quick questions. Thank you very much.